Good evening and welcome to All About Sport, live from Top of the Town Studios in Conley Street, Cavan. Each week we will include a wide variety of sport from all around County Cavan. And if you'd like your sport featured on the show, simply contact drumlinmedia at gmail.com. So first up this week, I am joined by Sean Farrell, Chairman of Mullahorn Club, and Brendan Sweeney, Chairman of the Valley McHugh Club, who are both joining us this evening to tell us about the senior hurling final so welcome to the show thank you very much for joining us and congratulations to both of you you're highly involved with senior hurling in county cavan um sean when i come to you first you know um you know you've played with mullahorn you're telling me since um 1990 you're a scamming man but you know mullahorn are one of the main leaders in hurling in county cavan tell us a little bit about i suppose the history of hurling in cavan for people and our viewers who are maybe uh, unaware that hurling exists at such a strong level well, uh, Louise, there's been hurling in Cavan from the form, formation of the association and it has continued on down through the years and various clubs have been involved. And if you go through the records of the county senior hurling championships over the years, various clubs have taken part and various clubs have won the competition. So in 1990, uh, myself and um, Michael Fagan, Jimmy Fitzsimons and Con O'Keefe, we formed a hurling club in Mullerhorn. Mm -hmm. And uh, I must say that we wouldn't be in existence in Mullerhorn only for the football club. Mm -hmm. And there's it's very strong. Which is very strong yeah. and there's a great tradition of football in the area and that that is the still the, the situation. And uh, only for the football club we wouldn't be in existence today. And uh, They've been always very helpful to us down through the years mm -hmm. and have assisted us in every way. And uh, we formed the club in 1990. And uh, the first year we took part, we won the Senior Hurling Championship. And you, both of you, yourself, Brendan, you both play, have played together. So you're a Cork man, Brendan. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you came from Cork, <coughs> come from Scammon. So you both played for Mullerhorn and won many championships. I played at Mullerhorn for the first four years, I suppose, and won four championships at Mullerhorn. And uh -huh. then there was no other club to play for yeah. a few years after that. So I suppose at the, at the hurling level, it kind of the, the whole idea of playing for your club has to differ a little bit, would you say? Because if there's a club, no club in your area, um, you probably possibly have to go to the the nearest club if you want to have that opportunity. <coughs> well, when we started first, um, we was chaps from Bally McHugh played with mm -hmm. us and uh, they were very much in part of the club and the team. Brendan played with us and uh, there was other chaps there, uh, Anthony Goldrick and Anthony Briardy mm -hmm. and Edward Heslin mm -hmm. and they were very much part of the club when we started off yeah. and um, they played a prominent part in it for a number of years. Yeah. So as we know, Cavan isn't you know a strong hurling county. Um, how do you kind of promote hurling in Cavan, Brendan? I know you're you know involved. You're chairman of your club, and um, how you know how do you, are we going to promote hurling in Cavan? Um, <coughs> well, well, like you know, the kids themselves are mad to play hurling. They love trying new things, and obviously, there's great skill involved. And they love you know yeah. the it's it, it's harder to master than football, I suppose, in, in such, and that's not making little of football or anything like that. Um, yeah. So Owen Morrissey, he's involved <coughs> Owen in promoting. Owen is that coaching development officer or administrator at the moment. So, so within the schools, it's <coughs> become more prominent in schools? He's coming around the national schools, um, mostly in the areas where there, there is hurling clubs. It's just a new initiative, is it, with the national schools, I believe? The um, secondary schools, it's, it, it's something that's been in secondary schools. What about the primary schools? Well, Owen's a little over 12 months in, in the county now. He's come from Waterford, so he's, he's implied with the county board to go around and, and help promote it yeah. at, at underage level. Yeah, so it's really um. So I suppose the underage level, I suppose in the next ten years, we'll ho hope that it'll be spread a little bit more spread out around the county of Cavan and and build a bit more. So the Mullahorn, where you know, you, do you use the grounds um in Mullahorn to train on? Is you know are the GA, you know, open to? Yeah, we um, train in the in the local GA pitch there, and there's a training pitch uh, adjacent as well. So. You but mm -hmm. uh, plenty of facilities anyway. There's no problem yeah. with facilities, you know. So there's it's all share. Um. So you're Saturday the twenty ninth in Breckney Park at five p.m. is the is the um senior hurling final. 
against Mullahorn versus Bally McHugh. Well, I suppose, you know, um, who, who would you say, um, you know, is the strongest team, you know, without, I suppose, being biased? Um, Brendan, um, who who was um, who's been strongest in the competition? So it's you were telling me, tell me a little bit about the championship. You know, three different teams that took part um, in the championship. You've Mullahore and Bally McHugh and Coot Hill in the mix. In the mix so yeah. How does it work when it's just three teams? Uh, well, there was originally supposed to be four teams in it, um, but we played mm-hmm. Coot Hill in the semi final. Um, we played that last mm-hmm. Thursday night on yeah. the lights on the three G pitch, and we won that. Mullahore was supposed to play Woodford, but unfortunately, Woodford just couldn't field. So that brings just the two of us left now. Um, Mullerhorn weren't beaten in the championship yeah. finals since they were formed until yeah. we got lucky last year and beat them. Yeah, so just so kind of like, um, so you know, uh, mixed it up a little bit with Bally Miku coming in and, and beating Mullerhorn. How did you feel about that, uh, Sean? Mm-hmm. Well, naturally enough, uh, we were disappointed. Yeah. And, uh, and on the day, like, I've no doubt about it. Bally McHugh were the better team on the day, and there's no question about that. And they were deserving winners. Yeah. And uh, I think they won by about eight points. Mm-hmm. Now they've been been threatening there for a few years, and we played them in a few county yeah. finals before, and they've run as tight. And uh, they obviously have done a lot of work at underage, yeah. and this this work, <laughs> I'd say Brendan here has done most of it with others, yeah. and it's now coming to fruition. And they won the championship last year as a result of the, yeah. the underage work they had been doing. Yeah. You're both obviously very passionate and, and you put a lot of um, effort in promoting and pushing, you know, hurling in your area and, you know, um, it's a fantastic thing that you're both doing. But I think your aims for the hurling final, you know, you, you know, you want to really promote the hurling. You want to get young people out there to come and watch. As you say, it's a fast paced sport, very skillful and it's a great game to watch. You know, you, you want more people to come to Breffany Park and um, to to support. Um, tell us I suppose, what your aims are for the hurling final that's coming up on Saturday week, Saturday 29th, Sean. Well, as Brendan has already said, hurling is a, is a, it's a very skillful game and it's a hard game to master. And um, but I think hurling is well liked in Cavan. Now, mm-hmm. I say that for an unusual reason and it's an, it was the Cavan under twenty one team were playing in um, the under twenty one football final there right. yeah. last year, was it? Yes. But anyway, the game was played and Cavan had lost the game. But I looked around the the, the stands. The the league final was being played afterwards mm-hmm. between um, Dublin and Kilkenny, and most of the Cavan people stayed on to watch all the hurling. So I've no doubt whatsoever. That the public in Cavan like hurling and have an interest in hurling, and I, I, I was one hundred percent sure about that watching that particular game that yeah. day, because they all stood stood there in their blue and white colours and they were happy to watch that game and they stood to the end of it, mm-hmm. and they, I think they appreciated the skill that was involved. Mm-hmm. So there is an interest in hurling in Cavan. Do you find a lot of your players, um, you know, f- f- play football and play hurling as well? Do you have a lot of players crossing over? Do yeah, yeah. yeah. We've we've about two or three on the in the Holland squad that wouldn't play football. The rest of them will all be dual players. Yeah. So the skills are transferring from skills one skills. sport to the other, Certainly which helps, um yeah. which helps at both levels. So you're hoping for you know the brass band. You're hoping for lots of support from you know from Cavan people, um and you know that it's promoted and advertised and that hurling really gets, you know um respected. You know um this year's senior hurling final, Mullahorn, you're in a football final as well. So there's a, a, a I'm sure and Mullahorn are great supporters. So I so there'll be lots of silver. Bally McHugh, you're really going to have to, um, you've got to bring all your supporters. You've got a tough competition ahead of you, I'm sure. But um, your main sponsors, who's sponsoring? You know the the hurling final. Is there any main sponsor? So you were saying, Brendan, um, you don't you don't have any sponsor in particular. You actually do a lot of fundraising yourselves. You have no not, not a main sponsor in our, in our club as such at the moment. Is anyway. it something you you want, or well, you either looking s- for it, or are you happy to to work as you are? Certainly, if someone has lots of money and they want to give it to us, we'd we'd, we'd certainly talk yeah. to them. We wouldn't say and no. You you can tell the people out there watching that you want it straight into that camera, there, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we're a small parish, and you know most of the people in the parish contribute something to us as it, as it is already. You know, yeah. as much as much the cans as there's no major businesses within yeah. that. So 
I'm getting a, a real big sponsor would be unlikely for us, but we'd certainly Even talk to just anybody a small sponsor. It would, it'd be, yeah. We'd have a few small little sponsors that would, you know, sponsor a bit of gear every so often for, yeah. for, for the various different teams or yeah. things like that. So but we'd certainly appreciate everything that anyone does for us. Brilliant. And Sean, do Mullahorn um, have a sponsor? Well, uh, they, we have no real sp- sponsor as such. We've been very s- helping from different people down through the years and... Uh, Michael Fagan there from the pub has been consistently mm-hmm. helpful to the club yeah. over the years and we've run different functions from time to yeah. time. But it's an ongoing thing and uh, money is not easy to come by and it just requires work and just keep it going. Yeah. And uh, we always seem to get there anyway. Yeah. So money is not a problem really, you know, and uh, at the end of the day, like it's, it's to try and keep the thing going and mm-hmm. keep the keep the teams up and running yeah. all year round. It's the main thing. The main. The main thing yeah. Well, look, thank you very much for coming in and speaking to us. I wish you both the best of luck um, with the Senior Hurling Final. And it's great to be promoting. And we're delighted to have you on All About Sport. And we're happy to promote hurling. And we really hope that people, you know, um, who are listening, spread the word and let people know that hurling is in this county. And it is just get out there and find a club and get involved. And get down to the final in Brackney Park on Saturday the 29th at 5 p.m. PM. So come down and support. It'll be a great um, game. Um, so stay with us um, as up next is um, Cavan Motor Club. And if you stay tuned, you'll just see a clip of some action from the Latin grounds and the Latin track. So watch this. It's good. <laughs> Um, thank you and welcome back. So that uh, video was um, courtesy of 
Black Motorsport so um, videos, so that was fantastic. Um, so, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, joining us on All About Sport. You're very welcome to the show. Um, I'm joined here by um, Alan Cullinan. I said right. that right? You have indeed, yes. Well <laughs> done. Much time good. to practice that now. <laughs> um, you're a chairman, chairman of the County Cabin Motor Club. That's correct. Um, yes. So you have a big role to play. And you're here to tell us about the championship, the fourth round of the uh, championship that's taken place um, Sunday week. That's right, yes. Um, we in Cabin Motor Club have our own autocross track, which is mm -hmm. an old disused quarry up at Hut Cross, just uh, beyond Coot Hill. Mm -hmm. And every year for the past number of years, we've run an autocross championship mm -hmm. consisting of seven rounds. And basically the chappy girl or guy with the fastest time in all seven rounds is the winner. Okay. This year is sponsored by Mervyn Wedlock Planter, who's a club member and committee member of the club. And he's put in great effort into it. It's, it's marvelous, thank God, you know. It's great to have somebody who's involved in in, in the rally and sure. um, yeah. who's, who's a great sponsor. Mm -hmm. So you're saying seven rounds and you're saying it takes place over, um, starts from January till runs. Yes, we basically have three rounds in the springtime and then we have a break for the summer and come back and complete four in autumn, winter time, okay. culminating with the last one this year on the 30th of December. So you're on like fourth round. Fourth round, fourth round. on the 30th of the month. Yeah. So, um, you know, Latin, Hutz Cross venue, it's, it's a very uh, special, um, um, course, it's you know, tell us a little bit about the history of that course. You know, about the, the motor club getting that right. course and getting their hands we on it. decided back in oh, the mid 80s mm -hmm. that uh, it would be an idea that we would get our own venue. Yeah. And we scoured the countryside and we found an old disused quarry out at Hut, Hut Cross and we th got a grant through the sports council and that and the lottery. And we purchased the land and over the next number of years, nearly eight years or so, we developed it and laid concrete down and tarmac and graveled areas and made a, a track on it approximately a mile, just over a mile in length, yeah. various twists and turns on it and jumps and humps yeah. and bumps and everything. And we be we started our first event, I think it was October 1995. Yeah. And it was a great success, totally enclosed venue and whether a spectator Mm -hmm. viewing area and everything there and over the last years we've added to it made yeah. it safer got better facilities in there and that and uh, we're very proud of it i must admit it's it fantastic. looks like a great course and, and very testing for the driver and lots of as you said twists and turns as well you mm. say lots of your members you know got a taste of their first competition on this course yeah. so um you know it, it, it'll be an exciting um competition sure. for somebody's um, um competitors coming mm. back so it's the the fourth round um, of the autocross. So this is a gravel. It's a it's a track. It's a loose surface event. Loose surface which event. You, uh, being loose surface, you have to have, as the, the word says, loose surface, which is basically gravel and that. But you can also have a mixture of surfaces, as in yeah. concrete and tarmac as well, as distinct from another type of autocross, which is called grass surface, mm -hmm. which basically runs on a farmer's field. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Totally. Even though the discipline is similar, but it's totally different yeah. skill, as you can imagine, running on grass yeah. than. On, on the hard stuff and the, and the loose gravelly stuff we have. Great. Well, I'll, I'll come back to you in a minute, sure. um, uh, Alan. I'll come to you, um, Raymond. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for, for coming in. So you're the com committee member and you're clerk of the course. That's a very important role, clerk of the course. But for viewers who are you know, maybe unsure, what, what is your role on the day and what do yeah. you have to oversee? Well, just oversee and um, make sure I have enough of safety people and marshals and that to help mm -hmm. out. And basically the setup of the track. Just the, the track is it's easy set up, just a few things to be done on it, you know, it's not... Do you change for each of these rounds? Have yeah, you changed we, we the track can, and Yeah, change directions. the track round just on the day, it depends on what way we run it, you know, we can run it clockwise or anti-clockwise. Yeah, so safety areas for people yeah. who want to come and spectate. And it's very spectator friendly anyway, you yeah. know, there's a good hill and safe place That's for right, spectators to yeah. stand up on, you know, so they're well away. But uh, uh, just basically setting up the track and having enough personnel there just to run the event on the day. Okay. Um, and I suppose Alan then um, in relation to the different classes you've you know lots of different competitions running there's um how many different classes? Right. We we have six different classes. Naturally you can't really run a Jaguar against a Morris Minor. It just mm -hmm. wouldn't it wouldn't yeah. be fair to I don't know which to either the Jaguar <laughs> guy or the other guy. But we, we basically break it up into the, the power of the car so mm -hmm. that like minded cars are racing against each other. And we have six different classes ranging from cars up to 1.4 liter and to up to uh, rear wheel drive or front wheel drive to cars over two liter. And then we have a special class for buggies and 
sort of combination cars. What type of cars are they? You were saying combination cars? Well, basically, you would have uh, basically rally cars, which are sort of Ford Escorts. So modified. Honda Civics, modified. Yes, specifically. These are in cars to take out on the road for normal Sunday drive. Correct, (laughs) correct, absolutely. Um, uh, So... um, you're saying so they're different so there's the different classes and sure. obviously there's uh, everybody's competing in whatever class so you have battery drive front wheel drives and is is it about um i suppose Al, or um darren you probably tell me a little bit more about this you're um running in second place in the competition yeah. at the minute darren o'brien so you're one of the local hopefuls from mountain lodge yeah, <laughs> yeah. so if you're practicing on the roads of mountain lodge i hope not no. but darren you know in your um the main part of the ed- is it about you know taking getting the speed up on the straights watching the corners you know tell us a little bit about you know what's you know you, what skills uh, are involved it's all about just carrying speed and getting the right lanes and stuff and not spinning and Keep going in what one type lane. of a car? What, what, what class are you in? I'd be uh, the 1600 class, class oh, 4. Class 4. Yeah, and Honda what type Civic. of car? Honda, Honda Civic. Civic yeah. And um, does it take much for you to kind of, um, to, I suppose, maintain your car and... Uh, bits and pieces, like tyres there, a bit of deer, but... Yeah, and what type of sponsorship? Do you have any sponsorship? No. Darren? <laughs> <laughs> Me back pocket, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's as good a sponsor as there's any. There's plenty of room Daddy. on the car for, <laughs> well, you know, for Darren, you know, Yeah, oh, of course, you yeah, have anyone's um, looking to sponsor you. Yeah. Tires and fuel, I'm uh, sure, are very expensive. Fuel, yeah. Are you good with working? Do you work with cars yourself? Uh, I do, do you work myself, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so if I'm wrong, you'd, yeah. you wouldn't be afraid to lay in on that. Now. So what, what, what is your car running on? Is it fuel? Is it like petrol or? Uh, I just have it on normal petrol. Petrol, pumps, yeah. yeah. Okay. You can map it up to race and fuel. Yeah. So you're, you know, um, you're you're running in second place. You're how many points are you behind the the leader? Um, about eleven points or so. Yeah. A bit of time to play catch up, maybe. Yeah. And you'll get there. Wow. Oh, okay. So what if you if you, uh, win this competition in your class? What 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 does the winner get? Oh, uh, you just get a trophy and overall. Oh, yeah. And what points would you get, in the championship? What points? Well, it'll be just whatever points to, you come out to beat total. the other man. Yeah. So. You basically get 15 points for a win. Yeah. 15 and points for a win. win. And it's, it goes down gradually from that. Yeah, so yeah. So if he wins, yeah, so this will yeah. be, so this will put you, if you win this competition, that'll put you in the lead for this competition. Uh, if you win on, maybe on, on... Um, I'd have to win maybe two or three. On Sunday, to, yeah, yeah, to build up the points up, to kind yeah. of... And make sure the other guy doesn't score. Yeah. <laughs> So your your um is any of your b- big um competitors any of your um I suppose arch enemies taking part in the competition anyone that you really want to beat uh, or don't want to beat you the boy is in front of me yeah you don't want him to beat you and he's tough to beat now. um so tell us then um so you were saying your main sponsor is, is Mervyn Wedlock he he drives himself he does yeah. yes handy enough driver uh, and is he involved is he in the competition himself um he hasn't competed so far this year okay. in our event um the track was uh, hired out to a neighboring club from northeast there uh, mm-hmm. a fortnight ago and mervyn was out for his first spin in that and yeah. he actually won their their event yeah. so uh, i presume he'll uh, he'll make an appearance on the uh, yeah. uh, next sunday and uh, we'll, yeah. we'll see what happens he, he, he's a he's a very good driver himself very now good. so, so it's taken like. place on um Sunday the 30th the 30th so Sunday the 30th of uh, September that's Sunday week actually um a Latin cross venue um just outside Coot Hill and um, what time is it all kicking off at um ba- Alan the um the gates open at nine o'clock where all the cars arrive for scrutiny okay. but, uh, scrutiny being that the, the cars have to be checked can, basically can, to say what yeah. that they they are what they say basically so can members and the public come and, yes, and have a look at the cars can, and they can indeed yeah. so the gates open at, at uh, nine o'clock um first car will probably be away at about 11 mm-hmm. and they will have a run of three laps of the track timed mm-hmm. and they will have probably three runs of that with okay. their best two runs to count all right okay so it'll be a full day of events full day and We'll probably get home about half four or five o'clock or so. Mm-hmm. So I suppose you hope that the weather conditions will they affect the competition like Darren f- for you, like I mean, obviously dry, driving on dry yeah. Uh, yeah. gravel yeah. is much easier than on a wet surface. Oh, I'd, I'd be the opposite way myself. I'd rather it wet. Yeah. The way in front of me is too much power for the wet. So. Do you, you have diff- you, you don't have 
Sorry. Oh, he'd he'd have more power, like. So oh, for for the He'd be spinning wet. more than me. Yeah. So I'd be praying for rain. Are you a day. front wheel driver? Front wheel driver. Yeah. For, so so you're you're praying for the rain. I'd be praying for because rain because he's back wheel driver, is he? Yeah. So he'll spin more. Hopefully. I know. <laughs> see, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I do know. Um, and as I was asking you, does many ladies get involved? Any ladies in this competition? Yes, there are. <laughs> there are. There, there's um, a good competitor from Sligo comes over yeah. to most of our events, uh, Kathleen Kennedy. And she, she's very, very good. So, um, no, it, it's open to, to girls as, as well as guys. And uh, the more, the merrier. Yeah. So there's no, um, like, uh, you know, the road rally driving, you don't have a navigator. It's just the driver. No, just okay. You're yeah. on your own. You're just on your own. You're, <laughs> you're, you're <coughs> on your own. You have no one to blame. <laughs> you have no one to blame. <laughs> yeah, you have nobody to blame. Um, so, Darren, you're 18 years yeah, old. How yeah. long have you then been competing and, and driving? How did you get involved in Oh uh, well, in I was competing sport? in sport there in the north, doing a championship when, when I was 12. Wow, Started off there on a course and then got the bigger yoke then uh, started to play with the big yeah. boys. <laughs> so before that, you didn't have your road, obviously your road driving license, but no. you have a specific one you can get yeah. for, obviously. Yeah, you can, get, you can get your license there at 16 in yeah. for, for Motorsport Ireland. Yeah. For Brilliant. tracks, but not for the road. Do you see a future in this for yourself, or is it oh, something you want yeah. to pursue at a higher level? No, I wouldn't mind it, yeah. Is get, there good money, the money in, <laughs> in it for, for the winners? What would you say, Alan, is it... Well, this this is purely amateur at, is, at this yeah. at this stage. Yeah. So there's there's no money monetary value involved at all. Where could so someone like Darren go to? What's the kind of next? Obviously, if this is <coughs> amateur level. Um, basically, um, he if he's good enough at this, and as if he gets the sponsorship from people out there and whatever, he'll be able to improve his car, maybe move up to a, a higher powered car, yeah. and by doing other events, mainly rally events like our own stages rally and various ones around the country he will get noticed yeah and it's just like anything else and if he's good and he wins events yeah. then more people will be in, involved in it and more people will want to be associated with him and put their name on his car and it'll come to the attention of the big boys and eventually if yeah. he's good enough which i reckon he is yeah very good that he could get to the stage of like craig breen at the moment who uh, had a fantastic run in, yeah. in rally, rally great britain last weekend yeah you know and, and it's great to see it for irish motorsport yeah. Which, yeah, so there's lots of hope there for yes. you, um, for you, Darren. Um, so you were saying that um, it's it's happening in Latin, but you're saying other clubs from across. You're saying like Motorsport Ireland, you know, let all the other clubs around Ireland, you know, yeah, all the different motor clubs in Ireland are invited to this event. Yeah, correct. We're we're run by we're under the umbrella of Motorsport Ireland, which mm -hmm. is basically the governing body yeah. of all four wheel motorsport in the country, and. We run an autocross event that's open to any other motor racing driver that mm -hmm. has a license. He can come along, go to the website, countycalvinmotorclub.com. You can download uh, an application form, or an entry Brilliant, form yeah. for the event, fill it in, send it off to the secretary with the appropriate fee, and turn up on the day. And once your car passes scrutiny, and everything is in order, away you go. Right. And what's the website again? Countycalvinmotorclub.com. So countycabinmotorclub.com. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in and I wish um, you all the best of luck, Darren O'Brien, but very best of luck um, um, on Sunday week. So Sunday the 30th, 30th of September mm. um, in Latin, um, just outside Cusia. So good luck with that um, and I hope it's a great event for you all and it goes really well. Best of luck and thanks again thank for you. coming in. Yeah. Thanks, Louise. Okay, so thank you very much to all our guests this evening and that is it from All About Sport for this week. I will be back again next week at 7 o'clock, so stay tuned. And up next is our weekly music show, The Green Room by Paul Cox. So until next week, it's goodbye from me, Louise O'Reilly.